This is introduction to extractors. This is problem two. Uh, this problem is about reaction, shear forces, and bending moment for a simple supported beam. The simple supported beam we are going to resolve is a simple supported beam that spans four meters. is under two UDLs. One is eight kilonewton per meter, and the second one is 12 kilonewton per meter, located uh, as is shown in the, in the scheme. To the left side of the structure, we have a pin support, and to the right side, the right stream of the structure, we have a roller. So the first step to resolve this exercise is to um, assume which ones will be will be the reactions for this uh, simple supported beam. So we expect to have a horizontal reaction at the point A and a vertical reaction at the point A, where we have located the pin support, and we expect to have a vertical reaction where we have a roller at the point B. Doing the summations of forces in the horizontal right, uh, direction, we realize that the only force is H. There is no any action in the horizontal um, direction, so there, there, won't be, there won't be any any reaction in this direction neither. So the, re, the horizontal reaction is equal to zero, and we can demonstrate it with this first equation of equilibrium. The second equation of equilibrium we're going to use is the summation of moments around the point A. So we are at this point A in here, and we're going to do the summation of moments. We have um, sketches as well, the equivalent uh, punctual loads of these UDLs. So for the UDL of 8 kilonewton per meter, we have this um, equivalent load of 8 kilonewton applied in the middle of the UDL. And for the 12 kilonewton per meter, along this meter, we have 12 kilonewtons in the middle of the UDL as equivalent load. So the summation of moments around the point A are equal to 8 kilonewtons times the perpendicular distance 1.5 meter, positive because it's close-wise, uh, plus 12 kilonewton multiplied by 3.5 meter, which is the perpendicular distance from 12 to the point A, positive again because she's close-wise, and minus the negative moment produced by V B multiplied by 4 meters, which is the distance from B, B to the point A. All of this has to be equal to zero. So um, resolving this linear equation, we arrive to the conclusion that the reaction B, B at the point B is equal to 13.5 kilonewtons, and it's going up as we expected. The second uh, moment of uh, equation of moments at the point B, so we are at B now, is equal to BA multiplied by 4 meters, the perpendicular distance from the force, the reaction to the left side of the structure to the point B. Positive because it's close wise, the rotation is close wise, so the moment is positive. Minus 8 multiplied by 2.5 meters, the distance from 8 to the point B. And minus 12 multiplied by 0.5 meters, which is the distance from 12 to the point B, and negative because it's anti close wise. All of this is equal to zero by equilibrium, so the reaction at BA is equal to 6.5 kilonewtons. So now we have resolved it in terms of reactions, these extractors, and we are going to start now with the calculation of the shear forces. So in order to calculate the shear forces, we are going to work uh, interval by interval, starting with the interval from zero to one, considering, for example, the cross section you can see in the screen in the middle of this interval. If we do the summation of shear forces to the left side of the structure, the only uh, force we have is 6.5 kilonewton positive, and this is the value of the shear force for this cross section, and actually is the shear value for every cross section from A to 1. This is the sketch of the first, uh, the distribution of the shear force in the first interval for this beam then. The second interval to be considered is, um, or, or better said, the, the first, the second point we're going to consider is the point Z equal to 1.25 meters. It's a point in here, as you can see this cross section in blue, just to see how the uh, UDL works in terms of shear forces. So we are going to consider for the calculation the left side of the structure. So we are here now. So we are going to consider only this part of the structure, the left side of the structure, and we are going to consider only this small portion of the first UDL. So um, is we write the, the value of the shear force at this cross section in particular, which is at 1.25 meter from A. The shear force is 
positive minus 8 multiplied by 0 0.25, which is the distance from the cross section to the start of the UDL. And the value, the resultant value is 4.5 kilonewtons, the shear force at this particular cross section. The other thing that is um, important to understand is the, that under UDLs, the distribution of the shear forces is linear, as you can see in here with this small uh, linear function in the, in the shear force diagram. So we are going to calculate now another point, the point where Z is equal to two. So this is the cross section at the end of the first UDL. And basically we have 6.5 kilonewton positive minus eight because it's eight kilonewton per meter multiplied by one meter is eight kilonewtons. So the result is minus 1.5 kilonewtons, the shear force at this particular cross section. So we pass from the positive shear force to a negative value of shear forces. The next interval to be analyzed is the interval from 2 to 3. From 2 to 3, for example, if we consider a generic cross section like this in the middle, to the left side of the structure, the only forces I have in terms of shear forces are 6.5 meters minus 8, which is minus 1.5 kilonewtons. So the distribution of the shear force between 2 meters and 3 meters is constant and equal to minus 1.5 kilonewtons. So you notice uh, now that between forces, the distribution of the sh uh, shear forces are constant and under the UDL, the distribution are linear. The same thing will happen in the second, uh, in, the, in the last interval where we have an UDL again. So in the next uh, interval, uh, to do the calculation for the next interval, we're going to consider this cross section here uh, exactly before um, the end of the beam to, to consider the maximum value. So at this particular cross section, if we check the left side of the structure, we have 6.5 kilonewtons positive, minus 8 and minus 12, the contribution of the second UDL, and the result is minus 13.5 kilonewtons. And this is the value of the last cross section where we're going to establish um, the, the shear force for this simple supported beam. And because we are under a UDL, we have a linear distribution of the shear forces. Finally, I have to say that the reference line is the, this neutral axis, which is an horizontal line. On top of this line, we have the positive shear forces. At the bottom of this line, we have the negative shear forces following our convention. So once we have resolved the shear forces, it's uh, time to start the calculation of the bending moments. And in order to do that, we are going to run calculation to the left side of the structure in different cross sections as well as we did with the shear forces. The first cross section to be analyzed is Z equal to zero, which is basically the point A where the moment is equal to zero. Remember that we have a pin support in here and we have a hinge, so we are allowed in rotation. So this is the reason why there is no any moment. If we go to the next cross section, the cross section you can see here, which is at one meter from A, Z is equal to one. The moment in there is equal to 6.5 kilonewtons, the reaction to the left multiplied by one meter, which is 6.5 kilonewton per meter. And between forces, we are going to have a linear distribution of moments, uh, as you can see in this uh, bending moment diagram. The next point to be, to be considered is the point where Z is equal to 1.5. So we are in the middle of the first UDL in this cross section you can see in the screen. And at this cross section in particular, the moment is 6.5 times 1.5 meter positive because the moment of this force is clockwise minus eight multiplied by 0 0.5, the equivalent low of this half of the UDL multiplied by 0 0.25, the distance from the middle to the cross section where we are establishing the bending moment. And the result is 8.75 kilonewton per meter. And as you see as well, in here we are showing that there is a quadratic distribution of the bending moment because we are under a new DL. The next cross section is Z equal to 2. So we are here in this uh, cross section in the middle of the beam. The moment is equal to 6.5 times 2 positive minus 8 times 1 times 0 0.5 equal to 9 kilo, kilonewton per meter. And the distribution again in this interval is quadratic. 
The next cross section is z equal to three. So we are in this cross section, as you can see in the screen. And uh, in there, if we check the left side of the cross section of the structure is 6.5 times three meters positive minus eight times one times 1.5, the distance from here to here, equal to 7.5 kN per meter with linear variation because we are between forces. The next cross section is the cross section uh, in the middle of the second UDL. We are at Z equal to 3.5 and the moment is 6.5 times 3.5, positive because it's close way, minus eight times one times two. Two is the distance from eight to the cross section we are doing the calculus. Uh, minus 12 times 0 0.5, this portion of the UDL and the distance is 0 0.25 from the middle of this portion to the cross section where we are establishing the value of the moment. And the value of the moment at this cross section is 5.25 kN per meter. And the distribution is quadratic again because we are under uh, a uniformly distributed law. Finally, the moment at Z equal to zero, which is basically the point B is equal to zero again because we have a roller and we have a hinge. We allow, allow rotation, so the moment is necessarily equal, equal to zero. So now we have uh, finished the uh, sketching of the bending moment arm. It's time to, to have a resume of all the results. But before that, just to remember, so the distribution uh, in the first interval is linear because we are between loads. Under the first UDL is quadratic. Between these two UDLs is linear and under the second UDL is quadratic as well. So now we have the resume of our calculation in this diagram. We have the reaction, we have the bending moment diagrams, and we have the shear force diagram. It is interesting at this stage to ask uh, the question, where is the maximum moment? Because it will be relevant to the calculation or for the calculation of uh, bending stresses in the future. So in order to do that, we need to inspect the bending moment diagram. Apparently, we can see or we can say that the maximum moment is nine kilonewton per meter, but in order to be sure, where is the exactly located the maximum moment? We need to inspect the shear force diagram. The maximum moment will be located where the shear force diagram is equal to zero. The reason of that is because the, the relation between the shear force diagram and the bending moment diagram in terms of fact, on functions is that the shear force uh, diagram or the shear force function is the derivative of the bending moment uh, diagram. This means that where the shear force is zero, you will have a maximum for your bending moment diagram because the shear force is the derivative of the bending moment. So we have to locate first this point where the shear force diagram is equal to zero. And in order to do that, we are going to find the relation between these two triangles, this big triangle in red and this triangle with the blue base in here. X is our unknown. If we do the relation between these triangles, X over one, sorry, x over 6.5 is equal to one over eight. So x is equal to one times 6.5 divided by eight is equal to 0 0.81 meter. It's the distance from here to here. Now we have the location of uh, where is the maximum moment. So we calculate the maximum moment as 6.5 multiplied by 1.81, which is the distance from here to here. Positive moment of this reaction to the uh, cross section where the, maximum, the moment is maximum, minus the contribution of the uh, negative moment of the first UDL, which is 8 multiplied by 0 0.81 multiplied by 0 uh, 0.41. So the result is a positive moment equal to 911. And the location is, of course, where the cross, sec the cross section uh, where we have the shear force equal to 0. So this um, value here, this um, segment in here in red is representing the maximum moment of 9.11 kilonewton per meter. And this is uh, all the analysis for this simple supported beam. You see now uh, that with the summation of uh, forces in both directions, horizontal and vertical, plus the summation of moments, we are able to determine uh, the reactions in the first place. And after applying the definition, of bending moments and shear forces to the left side of the structure or to the right side of the structure with the opposite sign, we can establish and we can sketch the bending moment diagram and the shear force diagrams. And after that, we can locate the maximum moment 
where the shear force is equal to zero. And we had done in here a complete, a complete analysis of the simple support bin and their two UDLs. Um, and we realized all the internal forces that are affecting or are stressing this, this uh, simple supported beam in this particular case. So this is all uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching.